Okay, we're back inside the cube. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com, joined with Dave Vellante, my co-host, founder of uh, Wikibon.org Research Consultancy. And we've got a special segment today with uh, James Taylor, who is a um, uh, famous author, blogger, prolific blogger. He tweets a lot. He also uh, is deep involved in the SAP core apps. Uh, James, welcome to, uh, and, a, and a friend at Ohlone School of Palo Alto. Um, Welcome to the Cube. Well, nice to meet you. Okay, welcome, welcome to our world. Yeah. Um, so Dave and I, um, I'm intimidated by these two Macs. What's so. your, uh, yeah, what's yeah. your Twitter handle? Is it like the real Jam E T one two three. What is it? J A M E T one two three. E T one two three. All right, we're gonna have to tweet this out. There you go. The other James Taylor. So we love to have experts in in the in the Cube, but you're one of us. You're out there as an analyst. I mean, analyst, you're basically yeah, an analyst, right. you write, write books, but it's authoritative content. Um, but you're in an area that's really kind of core to the SAP and all this ecosystem. That's the core application suite within SAP. SAP has been modernizing their business over the past, uh, you know, four or five years, um, built from the ground up. They got some nice little, you know, uh, facades around things called analytics. Um, in memory, and HANA mm -hmm. is actually the yep. big gun for them. And they got their old traditional ERP system. So. Where are we with this? Okay, what's window dressing and what's the real deal? So break it down for us. So there's a couple of things. I think one of the things that SAP's clearly been focused on the last few years on the core applications is, is moving from an environment where really what they did was capture your documents as data and then move them through your process. So copy from an in, a PO to an invoice and just manage all this data, just interfaces on the data structure. And trying to say, how do we make these um, more of a partner in running your business. So if we've got a claim system, well, how do we make the claim system not just move the claim around, but actually decide if the claim is valid or not? Decide how much we're gonna pay on it. How do we tell it how to do that? So they've been really integrating their business rules technology into the apps. And at the same time, you know, you've watched the business objects folks come in and, and push their analytics forward. And now we're at the point where it's, you know, the next big thing is gonna be to say, now we've got this real high performance analytics. How do we take what we learn and use it to improve the behavior of the operational systems? Yeah, and we're not quite there yet. That's where the sort of next step needs to come. You start to see it now with HANA and the predictive analytics, but not quite closing the loop yet. So um, we talked with, um, we were supposed to have Hasso on um, yesterday, but it turns out he was never actually scheduled. So we talked to, I actually met him last night and said, hey, why don't you come on? I didn't have it, but you know, he's got the four step plan, uh -huh. right? And step four is ERP, HANA on ERP, and that's kind of, and I asked him what step five was, and he was like, world domination. So <laughs> essentially, he wanted to have an Apple store, like a store for his enterprise. Okay, cool. Well, step four is ERP with Anna. What, what, where are they with that? I mean, are they close at all? I mean, what's the update of that step? You know, that I don't know. I, 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 they, they're clearly, um, Hana has been something they've been talking about for a couple of years now. They've clearly got, um, you know, they, they went through a phase where it was really about reporting and the sort of soft analytics. And now they've got this new HANA with predictive analytics. They built a new front end for it. So they're really pushing the analytics up that curve. And certainly if you talk to the groups in the research side, they're thinking in terms of what else could I do with HANA? You know, if I've got the rules for my claims and I want to change them, wouldn't it be nice if I could run the five million claims I processed last year through the new rules and see what's different? Well, that needs HANA like HANA. Otherwise, it takes forever, right? So. That potential is really there with HANA, but I don't think we're still just scratching what the surface. What are you seeing for benchmark with HANA? We're here for people that's two weeks to, to 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, that's the, I, there's the same kind of stuff I hear. I mean, what, what for me is more interesting is not so much the, the thing, not, does it make things I have to do faster, but does it do things that I've never thought about doing fast enough to be worth trying? You know, so if I've got, if I get 600,000, I'm working with a client, I've got 600, whatever it is, 600,000 claims a month, I mean, whatever, huge numbers of claims. Well, if I want to know anything about them, I can't really do anything with that. It's just yeah, there's too much data, data right? Yeah. And so once I can start to do things quickly enough to ask a question, get an answer, and go, well, that's interesting. What about this? What if I rerun them and I don't approve that kind of claim? Oh, okay, well, that saved me $5 million. Well, maybe I should think about that. Okay, well, you know, which clients did I piss off by doing that? Well, okay, hmm, that's maybe that's not such a good idea. Yeah, revenue yeah. is forecast. Exactly, and so that ability to be really analyzing how you run your business basically scenario, basically scenarios, scenarios exactly yeah. Yeah. so John you, you mentioned that HANA journey um, it was side by side uh, bring it to the business warehouse right. HANA specific apps and right. then uh, ERP on HANA, right, HANA the on core, core applications right so 
uh, of that uh, of those steps, we're furthest away, obviously, from from Hana on the, right. on the core. He even said today, um, "I really can't. We really can't improve your transaction processing, you know, much more than two to three x, which is still good, but yeah. it's really hard to do, and that's probably a stretch." I mean, they said. I guess the number is 160 million euro, which is what I looked at. Two hundred and some thousand million. Two hundred million some euro. Something sounds like big. I mean, yeah. it sounds sizable, meaningful. But you know, you talk to customers, and they're like, "Well, yeah, we're not quite there yet." We did have uh, Opera on. They're yeah, beginning to use it. Yeah. You know, so they're an early use case. You familiar with um, Yeah, I know. Opera. Yeah. So I mean, everybody is because they're early adopter. Yeah. You know, yeah. right? So, so. But they, they have the kind of problems that Hunter's really good at because I think the value in Hunter is not going to be. From running the core ERP, the current core ERP systems on Hana. Yeah, you can make it a bit faster, but right. it's just not but frankly, it, it, wasn't runs, for that. it runs. The ERP systems run a transaction perfectly fast anyway. Right? If my transaction still has to stop so that someone can look at it, does it matter if it gets to that person in a half a second or in three seconds? Well, no, yeah. because he's not going to look at it till tomorrow. It's dead meat, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but once I can start to Move use from days Hana, to minutes, weeks to days, that's your yeah. problem. But when I can use Hana to say, well, gosh, if I did this automatically, what would the impact be? Oh, that looks okay. Great. And then I go make that change using some of the other technology SAP's got. So now I'm starting to feed back into my transactional systems what I learned in Hana. Then you start to get a real sort of, you know, they're trading off against each other. You can go back and forth between the two. And then I think you get some real value. I guess my sense is, uh, in terms of the journey, we're sort of at the beginning of side by side. <laughs> we're just getting yeah, started, they're starting right? to get some of the specific apps. Uh, it's, you know, in specific areas, they've got good, strong use cases. They are starting to sort of package some of that up, make it easier to do. And, and that's obviously important because some of this stuff is, is intimidating to people. They, they don't feel like they're smart enough to use some of these new features. So if you can make them more consumable, that makes people try it and get their feet wet. So that's good. I've been saying all week, it seems like the SAP customer base, they're starved for new technologies and, and innovative stuff, right? Cause they, yeah. What's your I mean, sense of that? Do you, you buy that or...? You know, I don't know. SCP's community has two very different groups to it, right? It has the people who, ru who use the core apps day-to-day -to, -day to run their business. They mm -hmm. put orders in. They put sales orders in. They get their commission checks from it, that kind of stuff, right? A and those guys, I I'm not sure they feel starved for new technology so much as they want to be able to have the system do more of the work, right? Share the load more effectively. Mm -hmm. I think the IT guys, they're looking for new technology. They're looking for better ways to run this infrastructure. They're virtualizing everything there, like higher performance. They're trying to run it more like an IT service. So I think, yeah, they, they perhaps feel a little bit right. That's new technology I mean, you think of SAP. I mean, you think of large, complex, expensive, slow to change, and we're yeah, not. Yeah. We're here. What we're hearing in the last couple of days is mobile speed, personalization, you know, fast. Yeah, and the apps, but I would say that the core application teams are starting to sort of think about that more. I mean, you know, I work with the folks on the business rule side, and they have a, yeah. some great business rules technology that really lets you um, build some very flexible pieces into the application. And it's surprising how many of the applications now ship with essentially the right holes to plug those in, so that when you want to define how I handle a tax form, how I handle a claim, you can change it whenever you need to. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting to build the apps in a way that reflects that desire for more flexibility. And I think that, that you know that's a good trend for SAP customers, for the people who use the apps, um, you know, for sure. Even though it's not perhaps a new technology, it's a new way of thinking from SAP's point of view. So James, um, if we were to ask you, so John and I, we have some Sometimes we, we we're called the ESPN of tech, right? uh -huh. so okay. <laughs> we love to we love to break down the the, the pregame, right? right. So we were talking about okay, what does SAP have to accomplish at Sapphire to make it a home run? If we had asked you that question on Monday morning, what would you have said, and have you seen it? You know, I think they have to make you know, given the focus on Hana this year, they have to make Hana obviously compelling to people outside the IT organization. They have to be able to go to people who run the business, the CFO, the people running the business, and say, because of HANA, you can run your business fundamentally better, more profitably, more effectively than you could do before. And I think the answer is sort of mixed. They've made some good pitches around some solid use cases. I think they've got, they've made some good progress on it, but I don't think they've got a home run as far as the majority of their sort of core application users are concerned. But I think they would come away from this going, they could see how they could do that. You now, know. so it's interesting to look at the three days. So the day one, you had McDermott doing the, the keynote. It was, it was 
kind of superficial. I mean, I think it was. I mean, he's good, he's smooth, but... You know, he was a, like a politician. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Mitt Romney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, in the, in the audience, it's uh, not, I guess not surprising, it's filled with Republicans and independents. But uh, at any rate, um, second day, Schnabe somehow connected to the audience a little bit better. Product guy, but didn't go deep into the products, but I think gave some credible examples. Today, you know, Hasso went over 99% of the audience's head. Um, and then, you know, Vishal, obviously, very credible. Um, a lot of people criticized Hasso's um, presentation as just too, too complex, but from a business person's standpoint, I actually thought it brought a lot of credibility because I see, okay, I got a dose of the politician, mm -hmm. you know, the credible, you know, product guy, and now I, I don't really understand it, but I know they're spending a bunch of money on this really complicated stuff and they got their best people working on it. That makes me feel better sure. as a CEO. So I wonder if you could sort of break down your reaction to those morning keynotes and the messaging, you know, that came forth. And how does that translate to, you know, what customers really care about? You know, I think, I think you're absolutely right on the last one. I think the, the important one, you know, Hassan, to some extent, is trying to demonstrate that he can go a level deeper than you want him to, to prove that it exists. Because <laughs> yeah, right? he can. And he can, and it exists, and we have really real. smart people thinking about this stuff. Okay, and then sort of you can dial it back a notch and say, okay, I feel comfortable now trusting these assertions that I got earlier in the week, because clearly someone has drilled one level down and got a bit more specific. Yeah, I still think that the challenge... And it's not just true of Tata, it's true of all these sort of in-memory, high-performance computing kinds of technologies is, as technologists, we get very excited about them, how fast they run and how many this we can do and how much that we can do. And we can't always turn that into a so what. And therefore, you can. And I think that to me is, is the so what, not for the business objects users, not for the knowledge workers, but for the people whose job it is that you know, run a call center where 500 people log into the CRM system every day or you know, the people who run supply chains on the, you know, the CIA. I mean, that, that, I'm not convinced we've connected with those folks. Okay, so, so not a home run, no. um, but, but, but some good base certainly hitting, putting sure. some yeah, people on the base. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's, my, that's a great analogy. My, my next got people on the base. Yeah, okay, so then now they got to drive the runs home. So exactly. we'll be watching you know, for tech ads <laughs> in next year. Now, um, my other question is competitive one. We love to, you know, <laughs> look at the competitive stuff. So Hasso said today, well, the people in Redwood City should just, you know, back off a little bit or, or take the time to really understand the architecture. And it was very, very typical SAP, above board, classy. And we know, of course, that Ellison's not going to do that. He's going to take up to us. He said, you know, a couple things about SAP getting into the database business. They must be on drugs. He said, that's like me going one-on-one -on -one with Kobe. Um, right? And we love that stuff. Sure. Um, it's good for rating. It's good for rating. But so what's your take on the competitive posture, SAP versus Oracle? Um, they've made runs before, uh, taken some lumps, mm -hmm. uh, but they're trying to change the game. You know, can they do it? Yeah, you know, that, that's an interesting question. I mean, the thing about if you compare SAP and something like SAP, IBM, these are companies that are willing to put a stake in the ground, out ahead of them and say, here's where we're going, this is the vision we have, and then take a couple of years to deliver on it, right? Yeah. And normally when you're competing with Oracle, Oracle doesn't do that. They're probably happy to be a fast follower. You know, lots of good stuff, but never quite got the same sense of vision. And the only exception is really on the database. Yeah. Right? And the database, Oracle is willing to be a bit more visionary. Yeah. So I think it's much harder to compete with Oracle around databases than it is to compete with Oracle in general. Mm. Yeah, because they've got they're more willing to also put it out there. But I don't think any, anyone who thinks that any of these technologies is so is completely impossible to displace or you know, what have you, I think is delusional. I think, of course you can, of course you can lose out to one of these guys. So, James, know? so we're getting down, cut down to our time yeah. here in the segment. So I want to ask a couple of final questions. One is, obviously, going forward next year, uh, what are you going to be working on personally you know, relative to your focus? Um, and talk about the, the change. So that's one question. The second question is, What's happening in the services business that's changing? Obviously, you know, when you have these inflection points, it's a tsunami of new solutions, and, and people will make more mm -hmm. money. There's a money-making opportunity yeah, right. for all involved. So break those down. One, what you're going to work on, what your focus is, and then the impact of the, I guess, channel, for lack of a better word, but consultants, integrators. Mm -hmm. You have these new opportunities. All the money's changing hands now. Sure. So we'll talk about this. So the first thing I think is, um, what's interesting to me is, is the way SAP has been restructuring its core applications to make them easier to embed more flexible uh, decision making, to make them more of a partner in how you run your business. So instead of saying, here's a transaction, 
Uh, it's going to sit in the SAP system until someone comes along and presses a button to say, okay, what can I do with that transaction? Can I do something with it now as the system? And they've made that possible in a lot more of their apps. And so I'm going to be working with clients who are like excited about that opportunity and say, okay, instead of touching 100% of these transactions, maybe I can only touch, I only have to touch 5%, or 2%, or 1%. The right percent. The right percent. And the rest gets handled by the system. And that's becoming possible with the ERP systems and the CRM and, and the tax and claims processing. I think that's a really exciting change in the way SAP builds its applications. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm also hoping to work with uh, some of the predictive analytics stuff that's coming out of the business objects group who are beginning to take their their analytics infrastructure and move into this data mining predictive analytics area. And that's an exciting change too, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. From a consulting point of view, I think the, the challenge here is that the initial money with any new technology goes to the people who just understand the technology, right? Because it's too complicated, no one understands it. But the real money comes when people can say, I can use this technology to give you a better ROI, or change your business in some way. Solutions. Yeah, change some ratio in your business. Okay, if I can do that, then instead of having to hire more of these kind of people as your business grows, you can keep that flat and grow your business anyway. And I think we're going to see that with the high performance, the in-memory, the analytics. We're seeing it already with with rules and with uh, predictive analytics. I think that's really, and um, big data has to go through that transition. You know, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, next. James, great angles on that uh, perspective. You have an exciting agenda ahead of you. We'll uh, hopefully um, get you in Palo Alto Q. <laughs> since we're in the same town, same that's school. Right. Um, daughter's graduating uh, fifth grade, got my son in fourth grade. So um, you know how it is, 12 straight years at Ohlone School in Palo Alto. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I live there. But, um, they probably well, feel that way too. <laughs> uh, I love the angle on the services and the consultants. I think that's totally right on the money. Thanks for your perspective. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks so much, guys.